Number 10, a powerful motorcycle can produce an acceleration of 3.5 meters per second squared while traveling at 90 kilometers per hour. At that speed, the forces resisting motion, including friction and air resistance, total 400 newtons. Air resistance is analogous to air friction. It always opposes the motion of an object. What is the magnitude of the force the motorcycle exerts backward on the ground to produce its acceleration if the mass of the motorcycle and the rider is 245 kilograms? All right, so let's just take this apart, all right? So it says that the uh, motorcycle, right, uh, the engine can produce an acceleration of 3.5 meters per second squared. So let's write that. So the acceleration of this motorcycle, I'll just call it in the x direction, is 3.50 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's wonderful. Now, it also tells us that the mass of the motorcycle with the rider is 245. So let's write that down. So the mass is going to be 245 kilograms. Now, just from this information, if the mass of the, uh, if the, mass of the motorcycle and the rider is 245, and that same motorcycle is experiencing an acceleration of 3.50 meters per second squared, then we will certainly be able to calculate the sum, the net sum of all the forces in the x direction. How? By using our formula over here on the right. So the net, so the sum of all the forces in the x direction, meaning the net force on this motorcycle, will be equal to 245 multiplied by 3.50. So the sum of all the forces in the x direction should equal, so let's just take out the calculator, 245 times 3.5. So we get 800 and... Uh, 58, it looks like, 858, and that is newtons. That is the net force. Okay, now, it doesn't, it doesn't ask us for the net force. It asks us for the magnitude of the force the motorcycle exerts backward on the ground. Oh, okay. So why don't we now just draw a little diagram here, all right? Now, the net force is positive and it's pointing to the right, okay? So what I'm going to do is let me just put that net force up here at the top. Okay, so I know any, any and all forces that I'm going to put into this uh, plane here, I know that they're going to have to sum up so that I get a net vector pointing to the right, and that net vector will be 858 newtons. Okay, so now let's read the problem carefully. So it says at this particular speed, um, the uh, forces resisting motion, right, are 400 newtons. So if the motion is to the right, where would the forces be pointing that resist that motion? Obviously to the left. So let's draw that in here. So we have now the forces here resisting motion. I'll just call them frictional forces. Okay, that should equal 400 newtons. And we can always remember that that'll be negative, right, when we plug it into our calculations. So now here's the thing, right? What's the missing force? Well, the missing force is then the force that is, um, that is used to propel the motorcycle forward. Okay, so let me just draw that in the picture here. So I'll draw that with, uh, I'll draw that with black. So I'll just put it above the line a little bit. Eh, it's a little too crooked for me. That's good. Okay, so here's the force of the motorcycle. All right, that's the part that's not being taken into account. Now remember that this thing is the sum of all the forces in that x direction. Okay, so if we think about it, right, the sum of all the forces in the x direction should equal force one, right, plus force two, plus force three, etc. So the sum of all the force in the x direction should equal, well, let me actually plug in, right, because we know this value, we know the sum, it's 858 newtons. That'll equal, let's say, the force of the motorcycle plus the frictional forces, which are negative 400. Okay, so now how do I solve this? This is a negative, right, obviously, so just add the 400 on over. And this should make intuitive sense. So the force of the motorcycle, right, is 858 plus 400, which is 1258. So it's 1258, right? But let's get, let's round a little bit for sig fig, so it's really 1260, okay, newtons. So this is the force of the motorcycle, but now I know you'll say, well, wait a minute, but that, that's pointing forward. That's not going backward on the ground. Right. That's the force that the motorcycle is experiencing. But how is the motorcycle producing that force? The motorcycle's tires are essentially pushing back, right, on the ground so that it propels itself forward. 
In other words, it's literally pushing the Earth backwards relative to its motion. Right? The Earth isn't really going to change much, but that's actually what's happening. All right. So the value here that we calculated would be the value that the motorcycle exerts backward on the ground. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped you. And please remember to subscribe. It would actually help us. Thank you so much.